Welcome to this uh, Windows Computer and Technology channel. And um, I'm just going to go back a little bit on the uh, chart yesterday because, um, of course, the chart, and, and of course, some of you have mentioned that, and, and um, I knew that the chart was incomplete. Uh, but maybe I wasn't very clear on that about, um, you know, the different CPU generations. So... Um, one of the things that is um, not shown in the CPU chart that I was looking yesterday, uh, in which I was talking about how Microsoft shows what generation is going to have or not, um, you know, Windows 11. Um, of course, obviously, the chart shows the basic information of each CPU. Uh, my demonstration yesterday was mostly more on the side of um, showing that yes there are differences between each generation and i mean there's there could be instruction sets there could be um the way that virtualization is done so definitely there is a, a cutoff point that's important to have and it's not because windows 11 seems to run well that it actually is running um every feature that it should be um, especially on the security side, because a lot of that will be using some of the virtualization technologies. Also, a lot of you are saying, well, you know, because uh, TPM 2.0 is not, yeah, well, I did discuss that a little bit in the video, um, the fact that, of course, past a certain point, the processors don't have TPM 2.0. And obviously, that is a cutoff point that won't be changed, which means... Any generation of Intel CPU that does not have TPM 2.0 is out of the question, um, even if you know they would consider that they're powerful enough, because that is not there. So they'll have a cutoff point there, and that cutoff point will show that there, this is where we put the draw the line. <clears throat> Two things also I haven't discussed yesterday and how the CPUs uh, generation. One of the things that has been coming back regularly is that the first generation of CPUs that were all, you know, very high risk with the Spectre and Meltdown flaw that has never been fixed. We are still running computers that have Spectre and Windows, uh, Spectre and Windows, Spectre and Meltdown flaws. Um, when you're running an older processor. The only thing they did is mitigate and try to make it harder to actually um, exploit this. They've also been able to mitigate it in a way that it doesn't um, you know, show too much slowdown on our computers. But that is obviously something that might be one of the reasons Microsoft is deciding what generation we're stopping at. The fact that the older your CPU, the less the mitigation is actually good. And the newer CPUs, even though a lot of them still had meltdown and um, specter problems, they were mitigated in hardware partly. And of course, with subsequent firmware updates or micro firmware for you know Intel CPUs. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, does, does a cutoff line go with that also? <clears throat> and that would cut off actually with eighth generation, uh, because the, uh, seventh generation and older are the ones that were like, you know, dead on with the, uh, Spectre and Meltdown. As for the TPM 2.0, like I was talking, um, I'm pretty sure up to about sixth generation, at least TPM 2.0 is probably existent on Intel chips. Um, you know, we know eight generation later all have TPM 2.0. Seventh gen, um, it does have TPM 2.0. Sixth gen, maybe it's a mixed bag. Maybe some earlier models don't. I don't know. But um, one thing for sure is that um, that, of course, is a cutoff point and one of the reasons why, say, an, a fifth or fourth generation will not be accepted ever for Windows 11. And um, that's something to that, that that's going to happen. Um, you know, that cutoff point with TPM 2.0 is going to happen maybe there. Maybe that's where, you know, they're going to accept, say, seventh gen CPUs because it goes with 
uh, TPM 2.0, but maybe they're not going to, you know, they're not going to continue older because it's, it's not compatible with that. So there's a lot of things. And, and yes, like you guys have said, there's a lot of information that's missing on that chart uh, in the details of each generation of CPUs. Um, but you know, it, it's, um, it was mostly just a, kind of a compare and, and a quick compare, um, and not going in too much details because there's a lot of people that are really at the minimal understanding and, and explaining, you know, very complex issues with, with, you know, what CPUs are all about is, uh, is also something, uh, you know, n not easy to do with. Uh, regular folks that that are just using PCs and and you know don't necessarily understand the underlying workings of that machine that they have, but definitely there's a place where this is going to have to happen, and there's a um, you know there's a spot in there that uh, well that's where we're going to put the cutoff point. Um, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised they maybe add seven gen, but I don't expect Microsoft to go very far back. And in, in the change, if they, if they do change, because we still have no word yet. But I think the testing internally at the Windows Insider channel is also an indication that they might be uh, thinking of, you know, so do we accept this older generation of CPUs right now in order to work with Windows 11? And that's going to be something that, well, no, only at you know the last the last minute when they actually released the um, Windows 11 OS. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching our videos.